Hey folks, welcome back to Advent of Code in F-Sharp. Uh, still day two, uh, no, sorry, still day eight, uh, part two. Uh, we ended uh, last video where I was going crazy with uh, generating uh, the path for our camel, was it? Yeah. And we were using all kinds of exotic stuff like infinite sequences, but that did not go very well. Uh, so let's do a quick recap of uh, how I actually ended up solving part one, and then uh, let's dive into part two. Uh, yeah, so let's drop to uh, some code here. Uh, for day eight. Um, this is almost where we left off. Uh, so you still see the crazy unfold thing. And that ends up working. Uh, I got my start this way, and I got it uh, actually in a reasonable amount of time in like a couple of nanoseconds, milliseconds, sorry. Uh, so that's okay, but I had to change something because my original thing that used uh, the instructions looping infinitely, that kind of crashed with a stack overflow and I was really confused as to why it was crashing. Uh, but then later on the night when I uh, was browsing the Advent of Code subreddit, and that's where people post their solutions, I've, I noticed something, uh, and I would like to share this with you. Uh, it's someone parktastic doing <laughs> the exercises in F-sharp as well. And they were doing the exact same thing. They were playing around with infinite sequences. Uh, so this was very familiar. They used a bit of a different uh, approach. Not uh, sequence.init infinite, but they use a comprehension, a sequence... Uh, Comprehension? No, what's it called? Computation expression? We'll get there in another day, huh? this kind of syntax. Uh, but they were using infinite sequences, that's the point. And uh, they state that like every time you do a sequence.tail, which is exactly what we did, we, we nibbled off an instruction and then we continued on, uh, it keeps a pointer to the original list. You know, F-sharp, mutable, uh, immutable state, uh, it, it keeps a lot of pointers to existing data structures instead of mutating stuff. Uh, but this meant that... Uh, there's a lot of pointers on the stack. <laughs> every new uh, version of the sequence, or every time you take the tail of a sequence, there's like this mini uh, uh, pointer uh, representing the new uh, version of the sequence. And that actually, for some reason, uh, blew up my stack. Or not for some reason, it's okay, sure. But uh, I didn't think it would happen for a problem this small, but apparently it did. So I got rid of my infinite sequence and I just did uh, hey, let's just index a list by uh, an index and have a, a, a wraparound. So there's a simple item add function now <laughs> that just takes the list of instructions and the index I want, and it's just wrapping around uh, if we go over it. And that actually solves the problem pretty fast, even with this fancy unfold uh, kind of thing. So that's how I solved part one. And I think we're now ready for part two. I did not manage to sneak a peek for part two, so uh, let's see what we got here. Part 2. The sandstorm is upon you and you are not closer to escaping the wasteland. You had the camel follow the instructions, but you've barely left your starting position. It's going to take significantly more steps to escape. What if the map isn't for people? What if the map is for ghosts? Are ghosts even bound by the laws of space-time? Only one way to find out. After examining the maps a bit longer, your attention is drawn to a curious fact. The number of nodes with names ending in A is equal to the number ending in Z. If you were a ghost, you'd probably just start at every node that ends with A and follow all of the paths at the same time until they all simultaneously end up at nodes that end with Z. Okay. Uh, example time. There are two starting nodes. Two things that start end with A, yeah. As you follow each left-right instruction, use that instruction to simultaneously navigate away from both nodes you're currently on. Repeat this process until all of the nodes you're currently on end with Z. If only some of the nodes you end, you're on end with Z, they act like any other node and you continue as normal. Okay, so what happens if you end at a Z node? And you have to continue, 11z is in the map, and we just go ahead. Number of nodes is equal. Are they loops? That's what I'm wondering here. If you 
if you if one of those uh, nodes hits their end nodes 11z is that like looping back to the original are these exact cycles or not maybe we're making things too complicated uh yeah okay so we are we start at two starting locations now and every step we take the next instruction on all those paths so it's left right left right left right and here we hit an ending here we hit an ending here we hit an ending and here we hit both endings at simultaneously and that's the number of steps we have to take okay uh i see the naive brute force approach in my head i'm guessing uh if i look at my input <laughs> that's a bit uh that's a bit uh much probably um am i gonna start with a naive approach to get a feel for a problem maybe we will let's look up one of those final there's only 16 final oh yeah and ZCC. so there's 16 minus 2 Actually, it's not that bad. There's only 10, 20 ish parallel paths. Yeah, I would like to see those, those end states. NPZ is an FTFL VTT kind of thing. What does it say about uh, how we get there? What's the start? Oh yeah, no, then I have to traverse the entire graph. <laughs> I don't feel like doing that. Um, yeah, so naive approach first, and we'll worry about cycles, potential cycles later. Oh, what the heck, why not? So uh, actually our algorithm kind of stays the same, except that uh, instead of uh, being at one location, we are at multiple locations at the same time. So let's take a look at our... Our state type. Instead of being at a location, we are at multiple locations. Let's just go and do it this way. Uh, our start locations is all the locations uh, that end with an A. Yeah, 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 we'll get there soon. Next day, we'll get there soon. I'm looking for the initial one. Okay, there we go. What are our initial locations? So that's. Uh, map give me all the oh no yeah give me all the keys of this map so those are all the node names or the node ids and give me all the ones that end with an a right Uh, why does first not work? Okay, if first does not work, just give me all the keys of this map. Um, what does that return? Uh, I collection, I think that's a sequence, so yeah. Uh, ID is a string, I could, should be able to do ends with, yeah. And it ends with an A, character A. Then we have our starts. And let's go back into the list world. So these are our starts. Uh, okay. It was expected to have string array. Oh yeah, this is array syntax. This is list. Okay. And yeah, the naive approach would be to have a different halting condition so here we say stop when yeah okay so we need to do a couple more things let's go to our generator this generates like the next step we have taken and instead of doing it for one node we have to do it for lots of nodes so we have to bundle up all the locations uh, we have to take a step for all the locations we're at so we have to do some mapping here we can keep the instruction, that's just the one. Uh, calculating the next nodes, that's where it's at, right? That's where it's at. So we have to map all the nodes, state.locations, and we have to map those. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can just do this. I'm just gonna put this in this little anonymous function here. So we say for every location, uh, map. So transform that location by looking up the, that node name in our uh, map and taking the left or right instruction. So yeah, that is all correct. And let's just return that. So our map returns a list of next locations. Yes, and our locations are just the next locations and our instruction pointer bumps up by one. That's still correct. Uh, what do we need to return? So we're generating the list of steps and that's just our locations. Yeah, pretty basic. So I think actually this is maybe the naive approach already, except for the halting condition, of course. What was that again? We have to hit an ending location in every path simultaneously. So we have to find uh, an element in our sequence of steps where we have all our current locations where nodes so these are now all the nodes we're at and all these nodes so there's a list dot for all that takes a predicate if that adds with a z we are at the final note and uh, my compiler was not happy what's wrong What's wrong? Why are there squigglies? <laughs> What's wrong? I don't see it. Parentheses. Parentheses, of course. So yeah, we have the same approach. We just visit multiple locations simultaneously and our ending condition is a bit different. We have to end with ending locations. I think that's it. Let's see what we do, can do for the example. Uh, the, the example has changed, right? I think the example has changed, so let's start playing around with it. There we go. We end up with a 6, which is what we want, but now... <laughs> let's put on some benchmarking. Uh, I hope this works. If this does not work, we'll have a little think about potential cycles uh, because I think there might be something to gain over there. But let's keep it simple. Yeah, this is going down a calculation heavy path. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's see what we can potentially improve here. Are there cycles? That's the thing uh, I would like to f find out. What happens if one of those paths hit an end state? Does it go back to the start or is it like a slightly different path? So there are no cycles. That kind of has to be a cycle at some point, right? Why am I saying that? <laughs> Why is my gut saying that? Um, and let's take the really, really small example we can uh, parse by by mental gymnastics. Yeah, let's take that one first. So we start at the two starting locations, turn left. There we go. And then in, right here, we hit an ending note uh, on the first path. 11z. And that just goes back to 11b. And that's already in there. Oh yeah, we can keep track of cycles for every path. That's maybe doable. That might be actually doable.
22z. What does 22z look like? It goes to 22b, which is helpfully the first path. Mm -hmm. Maybe it, let's take a look at the example. I'm going to do the hard part and go through one path uh, in my head. Or we could just print it out, right? <laughs> we could just print out the path, the ZZZ path even. Oh, it was a thousand notes long. It was a thousand notes long. But I'm only interested in like the last one. So ZZZ is NLX PFM. What is AAA? PFM NLX. But did they just switch order? Did I see that correct? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh, there's multiple ways to reach the end. Hmm. Cycles. Something. Something. Cycles. How many starting nodes uh, are we working with? Let's abort calculation here and let's take a look at uh, what we're working with in the actual input. So let's grab everything and start taking a look at what we're actually doing. Back to pen and paper or digital pen and paper. Okay, so let's see. We parse our instructions, we parse our map. We have some starting positions. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's actually not that bad, right? It's only six of these, so we can do a little of bookkeeping for each of these. But what would the bookkeeping be? Hmm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested in how deep are these cycles. So what I'm going to do is, if we hit an ending state for one of those six, one, two, three, four, yeah, we're just going to print out the current iteration and see if there's like a pattern in there that's what i'm going to do yes uh, so instead of a find we need to keep going no we, we don't actually i'm going to just going to do a a debug statement i'm just going to pipe something in here uh, to print out stuff Yeah, so let's put in some instrumentation here. Let's put in some logging. And I would like to see if we hit unending, what's the current iteration? So indexed is exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna destructure on that so we can uh, print out stuff. Uh, if notes it contains an ending state let's print out uh, where we are at Okay, okay, okay. Why is it saying all branches of an if expression must return? Yeah, but I don't want I want this to be like a hidden side effect. There we go. Uh, parentheses solve all my problems. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I plug in a map function that seemingly does nothing. It takes an index notes, returns an index notes, but we're 
having some secret uh, side effects in here and we're just printing if we have met an end node on some of these paths let's print uh, out where we are and let's hopefully see some cycles here so we are at step number index and let's just print out all the nodes that's okay we'll figure it out it's index not ids so really curious what we're gonna see here we see big steps <laughs> stop 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 okay let's take a look at what we have here or maybe let's uh clear and let's do that again so i only have my debug output there we go and let's take a look at what we're actually encountering this is input for another day <laughs> let's get rid of that let me zoom in a bit okay we hit npz we hit it one two three. we hit it frequently it's like one one five six seven two three one three four um is this like or how are these numbers related let's take a look so we have our npz that's the first one i'm taking a look at and i want to know if how these are related so what's the difference the difference is exactly it's doubling it's doubling that's that's encouraging <laughs> so uh if we found a for this example at least if we found uh, the end we will hit the end at exactly the same uh, number of steps every time is it true all the time let's just uh, do it one more Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. So there's cycles. If I see this happen for one more, I think uh, I am going to assume that this is the case. So let's take NNZ. Yeah. 19,099. 19,099. Yeah, yeah. It's always the same. So instead of. If we hit a, a Z for a path, if we hit an NC for a path just once, we actually know enough. Because we know like every every uh, 11,567 steps, this path, the third path, will hit an end. And if we know that for every individual path, I think we can figure out the moment in time when they all hit the and uh, their end state at the same time so actually instead of doing them like this in parallel we can do them sequentially not that it matters that much uh, but we can do it for each path individually which is a shame <laughs> i can back out of my part two changes again calculate the cycle length for each path and then just figure out the final uh, goal. So yeah, I think I'm going to do exactly that. Let's maybe commit this if I change my mind. Uh, what is this? Day 8, part 2. But it's the brute force approach. It's my default. And let's push that to a safer place. There we go. And I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to go back to part 1. And I'm going to do it multiple times instead, instead of in parallel. So let's grab our example. Yeah, let's grab our example again. Mm -hmm, there we go. So instead of doing this, uh, I think I'm going to keep everything exactly the same. Uh, our solve is just solve for one input 
Uh, let's make me take a quick look. Do I do the infinite looping of instructions here? No, I, I already used the item add approach. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, we're good. We're good to go. Uh, so I'm going to run this loop for each and every path instead for all path for all paths. Whoa, that's a that's a mood. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so plan of attack. We do this for start instruction. Where is our start? Here. We do this multiple times. Not in parallel, but just in sequence until we hit the path's ending. And then we know the length and then we can figure it out. Okay, that's my approach. So we can still parse our instructions. We can still parse everything. But what we're going to have to change is this part. So I'm just going to do a extract a function. I don't know what goes in. I don't know what goes out. But uh, let's extract this part. What do we need for this to work? Our initial state needs a start. We need the map and we need the instructions. And our ending condition is node ends with a Z, not the triple Z node ID. And for the rest, everything I think here is the same. So now we can use this solve path function we extracted to do it multiple times for each and every starting location. So let's grab the starts. We did that already. And now we can say starts to map every start to solve path. And then we can just pipe in everything we need, which is the map, the instructions and the start. So these are all the cycle lengths. And if we have all the cycle lengths, we can figure it out. What's wrong? That's a big uh, <laughs> compiler error. A type mismatch. Uh, expecting an I collection, but given a list. Oh, yeah. What's I collection here? My starts. Because keys is a sequence or an I collection, not a list. Let's to list that. There we go. Um, now we have our cycle lengths. So we know every path cycles to an end state. What's the mathematical thing we need here? They all have to happen at the same time. So it's the... Uh, I, I'm, I'm blanking. Is it the GCD or is it the, the other one? Is, is it the greatest common divisor or the lowest common multiple? It's probably the, the multiple, right? Yeah, it's the multiple. Uh, so we have to calculate the lowest common multiple uh, for this list of path lengths. But first, let's see if this approach ends. <laughs> so, example. What? <laughs> Why are we infinitely looping? Because our halting condition is not correct, probably. Uh, so let's take a look at that. What are we doing, actually? Oh, there's a solve input here as well. Was that a problem? I hope not, because I would like it to also end on my input. No, okay, it's still crashing or it's still infinitely looping. Interesting. Where are we going wrong? I'm not seeing it, so I'll have to debug. Do we use the correct example? Yes, we do. Okay, let's start uh, troubleshooting. 
again I'm doing some uh, aliasing so I can just run some code. Does the parse work? Mm, it appears to be doing something, yeah. Our starts should be one, two. That's not our starts. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so we found a bug. Uh, we're not parsing or filtering our start locations uh, super correctly. So let's filter our start locations super correctly. Uh, it has to end with an A, right? Yeah. That was a silly mistake. There we go. Let's try that again. Two, three. Two, three is correct. And now we just have to calculate the... Why is there only two? Because there's only two start states. Yeah. Uh, how do we calculate the lowest common multiple? That's a question for the internet. No, not a video. This will be a videoception. Um, I don't recognize any of these websites. Is there no like easy way to do it? List each multiple. Yeah, that's one thing I can do. <laughs> Is there prime factorization sounds a bit heavier? <laughs> That sounds heavier. We only have six numbers, right? Let's just not think about the problem too much. Uh, I don't think there's an LCM in F sharp, no. Uh, so let's just do it the silly way. I'm just gonna take the multiple of the first number and see if it's uh, a multiple of all the other numbers. You can do it more elegantly. You can do it way faster by using a prime factorization but I don't have the energy because we have to solve part 9 as well today I'm running a bit behind so <laughs> let's let's go uh, yeah so I'm gonna do the naive approach there's a typo in there length Uh, yeah, let's write a function. And I'm gonna put my skullduggery in there so we can uh, clean it up if we want to. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna grab the first. Well, let's make this a list so uh, our compiler can help us. It's an integer list. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Uh, so let's grab the first and the rest. Let's maybe just pattern match to do that quickly. We don't worry about edge cases here. So we just destructure it to first and rest. And then if on uh, rest list for all so if everything in there if a uh, first is a the multiple yeah yeah um, i'm gonna write another function here so this outer function will just pick up pick off the first number and all the rest will work with the rest where we do this check so uh, there we go it's a recursive function if uh, all the numbers except the first one if it's a multiple of the first one yeah yeah that'll work so multiple means if the rem remainder of the division by blah, 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 this number equals zero then we have our uh, lowest common multiple. So then we have it, which is first. And I'm going to call this num. So tail num. 
And otherwise, we are not done yet. Let's just multiply that number. Yeah, so we multiply by saying, keep a look at the, the same numbers, but do num plus first. That's a bit saying uh, multiplication. Yeah, <laughs> good enough. LCMM uh, rest, and we start with the first number. So, whoa. Uh, yeah, so what our compiler saying here, LCMM takes two. It takes the tail and takes the number, yeah. Okay, there was no problem. It was uh, the compiler being slow again. Okay, we have our cycle lengths. Let's see if this works. It does not work. <laughs> I can't believe how, uh, this year I'm getting stumped on uh, the easiest of problems. Uh, okay, so not correct. We should be able to calculate a common multiple of a two and a three, right? What's going wrong here? Of course, uh, I'm only multiplying the first one, so it's two, four. That will never work. That will never work what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, that will never work. This is the naive approach. List multiples. And then just find something that's in there in all of the lists. Okay, that's the naive approach that would work for our case, probably. Can we do? Ooh, we we failed on using infinite sequences for the path finding, but maybe we can use infinite sequences for this just to go out with a really silly, <laughs> really silly bang. So yeah, uh, this was totally incorrect. Let's take a second stab at the lowest common multiple part. I'm gonna do yeah, I'm gonna do it with infinite sequences because why not? Um, let's generate multiples of a number. by using infinite sequences. So we did this for part one and then we got rid of it, but let's do it again. Is this it to generate all the multiples? Let's print it out and uh, make sure. Whoa. Let's get rid of the zero. We don't really uh, care about the zero. Here you are. So this is a this is an infinite sequence of multiples of three. So let's write a function that takes a number and generates the multiples. So now we can generate multiples and we can use this in our LCM. So let's map every number to a list or an infinite sequence containing all of the multiples. So that's numbers, multiples, and then we zip them. We zip them six way. Is that a thing? Can you zip, <laughs> zip six? No, you can't. That's a shame. <laughs> uh, so let's write our manual zip. How do you do that? Nah, let's let's do the zip uh, implicitly. So, can you do the zip implicitly? How hard can this be? Why am <laughs> why am I battle planking on stuff like this? Uh, so yeah, we have numbers. Now we have uh, six lists of multiples for all of those numbers, and now we just have to go over them, right? How deep do the zips and the, the list.maps go? Map 3, map 
Map 3 is the biggest one. Zip 3 is the biggest one. It's not even that easy doing uh, this approach with infinite sequences. How do you know that an element is in an infinite sequence? Oh yeah, we could take a look at the size of the numbers or, or the magnitude. If we've, we're seeing bigger numbers, we know that we'll never see the smaller number we're trying to find uh, ever again further up in the chain. So yeah, this might still be a valid approach. Uh, we can do the same, the thing we were trying to do with uh, our first approach, which is make the first number special and just have uh, all those multiples and look up all those multiples in the remaining things. So yeah, let's do that. That would work. The zip would have been more difficult. So uh, yeah, so the first mulch, the result has to be in there, so we can just do a find. And that multiple has to be in all the other in all the other, but the check has to be a bit smarter than just doing a is this in the sequence because they are infinite. Uh, so I'm gonna write my own contains function for that. Uh, growing sequence and an item. Um, I think we can use a sequence.find again here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so let's do a sequence.find. No. That stops at the first item, but that, that stops at the first item. And if there is none, this will crash. So it's a try find. I think we can get there by using a try find. Or something in the try world. What 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 are the try things? Try pig, try pig. Return the first result where the function returns sum, but there might not be a case, so that's not what we want. Try find is the one we want. Yeah, if no such element exists, we return none. That's exactly what we. Uh, want to do here and let's pattern match on what we get out of there if we find nothing does not contain if we find whatever it contains this item the value is unused uh, what is this saying Uh, try find was that would that returns a T option? Why is it complaining? What what does a try find take? Oh, it takes a predicate that returns a boo. That's not what we want. Ah, <laughs> why is my morning brain bonking so hard on this part? Okay, I give up. This has uh, this uh, is a solved problem. Rosetta code is a good place uh, to be if you're looking for a very specific algorithm. There we go. Two lines of code. 
Uh, two lines of code, uh, and you can write it in terms of the greatest common divisor. That's interesting. Oh, it's two numbers. No. How do we generalize? We can fold. We can fold. We can reduce even. Can you reduce? Is that a statement that holds? Yeah, you take two elements of the of the list and you say calculate their lowest common multiple and that should work right uh, sounds like i'm super confident i'm not <laughs> okay but we have our lowest common multiple so yeah that was a very roundabout way of finding out uh, it's very easy to do this if you open up your math books or rosetta code so let's see uh, if this works for our input now we have not actually run this for our input right Ah, it's doable. They're not too big, the cycles. So we have a overflow. Cool. Uh, final small thing. Let's lift this to longs. Instead of integers. And I think that will be the final step for today. Yeah, everything is along now, so we can just do a transform too long here, and we're good to go. Uh, let's do it the other way around. Let's map every cycle to a long. And then we don't need to worry about all this madness. There we go. That's a bigger number. Whew. Now, let's see if we get our second star out. Oh, we got our second star out. So, what did uh, I learn today? Let's quickly recap. Uh, let's quickly recap part two. Part two was interesting as in uh, I started going the brute force approach and doing the parallel thing where we have instead of visiting one state, we were visiting multiple states in a list, this thing or locations. Uh, but that did not end very well because this, the, the paths were very long and it took a while. And then we took a look at the outputs here. And we noticed we had cycles and that the cycles repeated nicely. So every uh, cycle of every time uh, a path hit the end, it was exactly the same steps. Uh, and once we saw that, we could uh, figure out the, the case where all these paths hit an end state at the same time by using a lowest common multiple approach. And I spent the most time trying to figure this out myself. <laughs> <laughs> before giving up and looking up uh, these two concise formulas yeah fun puzzle i had fun it was a good one uh, i messed around a bit uh, with unnecessary stuff like infinite sequences and unfolding and it kind of bit me uh, but it's always fun to play around with stuff like this and that's what advent of code is all about right so this was day eight of advent of code in f sharp uh, tomorrow i hope to be a bit more fresh and uh uh, maybe we can go over this computation expression uh, syntax we've seen for sequence. Who knows? I hope to uh, find out with you tomorrow. See you again. Bye-bye.